Ah, let's see. Hi, and welcome back to Tanya and Oslo Knits. My name is Tanya, I live in Oslo, Norway, and I knit. That's what I do. Um, uh, I do other things as well, but you know. So, it's been a while. It's been, what, two and a half months since last time I filmed, almost three actually. Um, and life's been happening, summer's been happening. So thank you for um, joining back in and I have a lot of whips to show you guys. I have a lot of, um, well, maybe not a lot, depending on who you ask. I have a couple of whips to show you and yeah, let's just get started. So what's been happening since last time? Well, it's been summer. It's been, I filmed my last episode in the end of May, I think. And it's been June, it's been July, now it's the middle of August. It's my last day of the holidays, the teacher holidays, before I turn back to work tomorrow, return back to work. And yeah, it's weird because I've been on maternity leave and then that just morphed into the holidays, the summer holidays. And yeah, I haven't been to work since November, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But it's probably going to be fine. I don't know. I'm just... Part of me is really excited to go back to adult life, working and using my brain for other things than um, being at home and knitting and kids and all that. But also, it's like... It's back to work, it's more of a busy schedule, it's a bit of a mixed bag, so yeah. It is what it is, um, but this summer's been lovely. Um, we had our first vacation since we had our baby, and it was really, really nice. I it just made me realize how I've been constantly thinking forward once we're at home. I've been thinking, okay, what do we have to do when it comes to chores at home? What am I going to do with my knitting business? What am I going to do once I turn, return to work? Um, and once we arrived in Denmark, which is where we went on holiday, it was like my brain just got quiet finally. And that was just so delicious. It was lovely. So that was great. And we went to, uh, we went to Copenhagen, but that was the final two days of our holiday. Before that, we spent a week in Aarhus. And then you might be asking, where is that? Well, if you follow Petite Knit, you will have seen lots of pictures from Aarhus. That's like her area. Um, so it was fun for me to walk the streets of that city and see the locations where she's been taking photos. That was fun. Um, it also meant that they have yarn shops, which is great. So I got to, I mean, one purchase. Um, and, and overall, I mean, Denmark's still Scandinavia, you get a lot of mixed weather. We had two days where we could go to the beach, and we also had a day where... I mean, I haven't been that soaking wet from rain since... I mean, I lived in Scotland, and I can't even remember when, I, when was the last time I was that soaked. It was pouring down, we were super, super soaked, and we went into this toy store to just try to make the oldest kid happy, and... It was almost embarrassing to be there because it's like we're dripping with rain. We're so soaked. But I was like, okay, we're here. We're gonna just let the kid be happy. We're going to buy some toys to make the day better. And it was a really nice experience. Anyways, it was a great holiday. I did get to do some knitting while I was there. So we can start with that and then we'll move on to the acquisitions because I have a whip over there at the kitchen, a table which I can show you. I would like to say that my knits are super organized, but at this moment they're just carefully positioned around the house at locations where I can grab them and knit once I have the chance, because we have a baby and we have a four-year-old and it's just hectic. But in Denmark, I managed to knit this here, which is, the car neck warmer it's a pattern that i've just published last week and 
it's, I mean, the car neck warmer is not a very creative name. I just figured that, okay, I'm all mama brained out. I'm not feeling creative when, when it comes to names. So I'm gonna go for a car sweater, car neck warmer, car socks, and Junior's car mittens, because I have a couple of other um, patterns that are called Junior's blah blah mittens. Because once sometime in the future, maybe I'm going to knit a pair of adult sized mittens with a car on them. I'm not sure yet. It's not the first or second or third thing I'm planning on casting on, but it could happen. So keeping my options open. But this here is a neck warmer. I made this in from yarn that I had in my stash. That was my goal. I was digging through my stash while I was packing for the holidays. And this is Sunny Sunday held double into yellow tones, or this is mustard and this might be the might be the banana yellow, I can't remember. I think maybe the label was lost. I think so. So I just figured that, well, this will look good together. And my um, my godson, he... I, I keep knitting for him. And I thought I had made lots of neck warmers for him. And I was chatting with his mom and she was like, I really love the one he has. And I was like, does he only have one? I thought I had made more, but I hadn't. And um, at daycare, it's not very practical to have lots of white details. I know, I add white details to almost everything I knit, but um, I thought it was good to have something that was all yellow. Um, but I want color work, so this is what I ended up with. So the pattern is out. You can find it on Ravelry if you want to. It comes in sizes from 9 months to 24 months. That's basically because the um, neck, the turtleneck section is shorter for that size. This is two to five years. I think that's what I labeled it as because once you're turning two, this might be more practical. And my godson is two, so that should be a good fit for him. So I'll give this to him at some point. I haven't decided yet. And yeah, his baby brother, who is just a couple of months old. He is being baptized in October, I think. So I have also knitted some baby socks for him with cars on as well. I'll add a picture. I've knitted two versions. I might actually give him both pairs. Yeah, I think so. Because um, the mother, she wants... Um, I asked her, what do you want for the baptism? What kind of gift do you want? Because they have two boys at this point. So it could be a lot of stuff that they'll just end up with duplicate duplicates of. Um, and she said, well, we need always need mittens, we always need socks, and it's kind of um, things we keep losing, so a box with the socks and mittens would be good, so that's what I'm planning on making. And I bought the box, I just have to fill it now. So um, I think they will go in the box, probably. So that was during our holidays. Before the holidays, I knitted, I don't think I even had purchased a yarn when I recorded last time. I think it was the week after I had this idea, or maybe it was a week before and I just hadn't purchased yarn yet. But here we have a sweater for myself. I don't knit that many um, selfish knits, but this one actually made it to my needles and I finished it fairly, whoops, fairly early. And I really, really love it. It's so nice, so warm. If you've seen my other episodes, you will see similar sweaters. I have one with cats on, I have one with unicorns. And I figured that I wanted another sweater in a neutral colorway with color work that could just work in most contexts. Like, I could wear this at an office, I can wear this. I mean, at school I can wear my unicorn sweater as well. I work as a teacher, so no worries there, <laughs> but this fits in most contexts. So very happy with this one. I brought it with me to Denmark, which was a good idea since we had all kinds of weather. We had a beach day <clears throat> and I mean, it was sunny and it was lovely, but it was super duper windy that day. So I was actually really happy to bring this to the beach and wore it there so that I could stay fairly warm 
because it wasn't cold as such, but it was just really super windy. So the wind will blow straight through this, which is knitted in Rama Vams. As you can see, it's a chunky knit. The stitches. I mean, wind will get through this, no doubt. Um, but it worked well in that kind of um, windy climate that we had that day. So very happy with this one. It will be a pattern. And once I'm releasing this, the um, owl sweater I made this spring will also be published. So that was the sweater. I also, I think I talked about these the last time, but I don't think I had knitted them both, had I? I did knit two mittens for the same hand. Now I have a pair that will actually fit both hands. These are the witch brew mittens, which will also launch very soon because, I mean, this is a very good Halloween pattern, isn't it? This should work really well for Halloween. So it should be out in September so that uh, you actually have time to knit them for Halloween. But they fit, they work well, and I made these in Sanes Tin Pegint. Um, and my idea for this was that I had worn out a couple of mittens, which takes a while, but I did manage to wear out two pairs at once. And I wanted a pair that was just thinner. And this is what fingering weight, it's recommended gauge of 27 stitches over 10 centimeters. Once it's color work, it will shrink a bit. So, was it 28, 29? Somewhere around there. Uh, overall, they fit. That's the main thing. That's what you want with mittens. You want them to fit. So I look forward to wearing these in the fall, which is just around the corner. And I always, I mean, I have a, my birthday in August and I've always been adamant that August is summer month. But now I enjoy fall so much with knitting and the colors that I'm like, yeah, I don't mind fall being just around the corner. It's fine. Now one, in my world, big thing that's happened since last time is that I had another Christmas pattern idea. And I've made lots and lots of Christmas stuff over the summer, which is, you know, very incongruous thinking about the seasons. Uh, but I made these. Let's see. Christmas tree socks. I made the gingerbread socks last fall. It was September and October when I was working on the pattern and it was um, a success for me when it comes to pattern sales. So I figured I want to lean into the Christmas side of myself because I'm very much a fan of Christmas. I love Christmas. I love birthdays, I love Christmas, they're my favorite times of year, and why not knit Christmas stuff all year round if I can? I mean, once you're all um, Whoville rather than Grinch. No, I'm not Whoville. I'm not very commercial in that sense. Hmm. Not gonna call myself a Whoville member, no. But I do love Christmas. <laughs> I have fairly big feet. So these socks are in size 41, 42 in European sizes. Um, the pattern will run from 36 or 36 slash 37 up until 42, 43, I think. At least 36 to 42. And then I also finally am working on the children's size. I made both of these in um, Filkalana Arboleda, which is a nylon wool blend. Sorry about that. Let's see. And this here is size 34, 35. And I mean, I have kids. I prefer making patterns for people who can try them on so that I can check that the size fits. And I've tested the smaller kid socks, which I also have. I think I'm gonna grab some. And this is these for my four-year-old and they fit really nicely. 
So I like to be able to try them on and see that they actually fit. And then I figured I don't necessarily know anyone who has size 34, 35 who can try them on. So like, how am I going to figure this out? Should I have test knitters knit the size and just make a guess? And then I realized there's a thing called sock blockers. Why not just buy sock blockers in the right size? And I found that on Etsy. Ta-da! And they're actually really cute. You can see they have snowflakes on them. So this worked well. I think it was also a good idea because then I can shrink the size in the pattern with about half a centimeter. No, one centimeter at least. So I'm testing this. So these are in Filipina Arweta, but I made these here. And Sunday Sunday for socks. Yes, I know. It's not enforced in any way, but for kids who grow really fast, I find that you can perfectly well use Sunny Sunday. Um, my kid still hasn't worn out any of her socks. Let's see once her baby sister inherits them, if they will actually get any holes in them. But I think it works really great and it's great for scrap yarn finishing it. Just turning those Sunday scraps into socks. Why not? And... I mean, I had scraps from other projects, but I mean, we now have the socks and then we have a new sweater. I'm super excited about this pattern. I really, really enjoy it. It's a bottom up raglan sweater. Yes, I know a lot of people don't like bottom up. This is how I like to knit raglan. It is what's happening. <laughs> Uh, but I might see if I have time to make a top-down version at some point as well. I have a chart, I just need the knitting time and life is happening, so we'll just have to see when it can happen. But yes, we have a sweater pattern and it is so, so cute! I really like this, so much so that this is for the baby sister and I am knitting a sibling match over here, which is my biggest whip at the moment. This is size six years so that I might not have to knit a new one immediately. Woo. Now for this, I'm using Sunny Sunday Held Double. I've talked about this before, why on earth would you bother using Sunny Sunday Held Double when you have Double Sunday? Well, this is more tightly spun. You have a more <clears throat> stringy look to the yarn. So that once you hold these double, it will just fit um, the gauge 22 stitches over 10 centimeters a lot more than Sunny Sunday, which is recommended for 21. And a lot of yarns come in that 22 10 um, gauge recommendation. So I want the pattern to fit that gauge. I often use Double Sunday for 22-10 patterns anyways, but they also have the colorways. I had some scraps that I could use for the socks, and then I figured, well, if I have scraps from this project, I can use that for more socks. So it made sense when it comes to using up resources to do it this way. And of course, Sunday, they actually have... Sun is Garden actually have proper Christmas colors, which is not a given for all kinds of, um, all brands actually, which is sad. I mean, Christmas is the best time of year. Why would it not have Christmas red and Christmas green? And these are called, I think it's 4236 and 8082, if I remember correctly. And then they have names as well, but you know, if you're in the shop, you just have a label and it doesn't say what the name of the yarn is, so. Very, very stoked about these patterns, and this is my plan, which I don't think I've said out loud so far yet, but I really, really, really want to make an ebook. And the question is, will I have the time for my self set deadline? I want these patterns to be published in September. It is now August 11th. 
it might not be September 1st, but I want it to be out in September. And I would love to put them together in an ebook so that it could be a cheaper price for a lot of great patterns. And at least if you love Christmas like me, a lot of kids' knits. I think the adult patterns will just be side patterns, but in the ebook, I want to have baby knits, kids' knits, patterns that you can knit um, and get this kind of retro, Christmassy, cutesy vibe from. Um, and let's just see how far I get. I mean, school is starting, at least for us teachers, tomorrow. I have a lot to do, uh, but this is something I really want to prioritize. So fingers crossed that I will actually be able to finish it by the time I want to have it finished. So that's my whole goal for, it's been my goal since November, <laughs> but I mean, I had a baby coming. I couldn't just ignore my family and keep knitting. Uh, which I, of course, wouldn't want to do. Um, but yeah, let's see if I actually have an ebook for you by the next episode I'm filming. That would be great. I have some other finished whips as well, which means that they are FOs, technically. But they're just left around the house or they have been given away already. So let's just look at... Oh, do this. The Selbu trousers, which I'm knitting these in this hot pink. I think the color. No, I can't remember what it's called, but it's I think it's a fairly new color from oh. this as color. Four six zero zero four to six hundred or 4,600, depending on your choice of how to say it. Sun is Sunday. I'm making the smallest size, which is... It doesn't really have an intended owner at this point. I just needed to knit another sample to get a proper picture of the crotch increases so that the pattern will have a visual to help you understand how you are making them and what you should look for if you have done it correctly. But I have kids, I have kids in my life, I have friends who are having kids, so I think this will probably get an owner at some point anyways. Um, it's been a very slow knit because, exactly because it, it's not a planned gift for someone special, it's a pattern that's almost done and I need these other Christmas patterns to be done as well before I can make the ebook, so it hasn't really been on my priority list at all. But now I have enough to actually take the picture, so maybe I'll just enjoy some stockinette, plain, single color knitting um, once I've taken the picture. Because, I mean, a lot of people are monogamous knitters, and it seems like a very um, organized, quiet, <laughs> ordered life, and I'm not there. I'm not there at all, because I need different projects for different contexts. This is, it had stranded color work up there, but then it's just playing all the way down to the, um, what do you call it? The bottom of the leg, anyways, where you get this pattern again. And I need some single color stock net knitting for going on um, the bus, for example, or for knitting in meetings, which is socially acceptable at my school. And I like to have circular needles for travel knitting because I've broken enough double pointed needles in my life while traveling and stuffing things in my bag. So I just want circulars for traveling. And then I want some fancy color work because it gives me a lot of joy. And then I want to have some big projects because big projects are fun, but they're not very travel size either. So often I have like in 2024, my perfect number has been four projects at once. Just, I mean, five is too much, it gets chaotic. Three is not enough. Um, let's look at my, um, my acquisition. Um, I bought pure silk. And that's what I was gonna say earlier. 
I was going to talk about my holiday to transition into what I'm wearing because this is me in May 2024. I don't do summer knits. I don't like to knit summer knits. I just want to knit Christmassy woolly things all year round. And then we slide into June, which slides into July, and we go to Denmark. I want to go to some yarn shops. I look online to check what kind of yarns they have in stock. And suddenly I become this summer knits person again, because this is an old knit. Um, but I was looking at these fingering weight and even, even thinner yarns than that, yarns from different shops and orders, and I figured I want to knit something summerly for myself. Something summerly, summery. Anyways, I want summer knits on my needles now. So I went to three different yarn shops and orders. This was not the yarn I was planning on looking at, but it was the yarn I liked the most. This is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the colorway Ballerina. They actually write the name on the label. I think that's really nice. And it made me start looking at patterns online. I looked at um, Amelie T by Petite Knit. And then I figured Ozetta's Moonset Tea. That is what I want to make. So I have cast on that with this yarn. Here we go. And it's coming along nicely. I think this is the way it's going to be. We have part of the neckband here neckline. Something like that. And I'm really enjoying it. I don't know about you guys, but there's something about really nice, delicate fingering weight yarn on thin needles and plain stocking stitch. That's just really enjoyable. It's kind of mindfulness on my needles for me. Um, and I'm looking forward to making this in Norway, we have an organization called Framtidnivarehender, Future in Our Hands. I guess that's... They probably have an official English name. I can check it. They have a campaign about sustainable clothing consumption. How apparently some scientists figured that the sustainable level of clothing consumption, like right, buying new items for your wardrobe, the number for that is five garments a year. And that's not a lot. Apparently you can leave out socks and underwear and those smaller things. Um, but once it comes to garments, we're talking about five items a year. So I'm trying to stick to that when it comes to ready-made items. I've bought four pieces of clothing so far this year. And I think maybe shoes are included. I'll check my list. But overall, I'm trying to stick to that. So I figured I need some more basics in my wardrobe. So I'll just have to make them. They haven't said anything in the campaign about crafting yourself. If you're Norwegian and listening to Stricke Kekken, they are talking about the same issue. Should we count knits as included in those five garments? But I'm not doing that this year. Uh, and I barely ever knit garments for myself. So I figured I'm going to knit this and if I love it, I'm going to move on to the Amelia tea, um, which my friend gifted to me for my birthday as a pattern gift. That was really nice. So, I mean, I'm, this is size 3XL. I'm fairly plus size or in the plus size community I was following, what, five, six years ago, they would call me an in-betweeny, kind of biggest sizes in the normal shops, smallest sizes in the plus size uh, clothing lines. Um, and overall, that means that I prefer um, fairly fitted items in my wardrobe. This is the Cumulus T, it looks that way, but it's actually the Cumulus blouse because I had some chunky yarn that I bought. I used to live in Scotland, um, not in Edinburgh, which is what everyone asks about. Did you live in Edinburgh? No, I lived in St. Andrews. 
and St. Andrews is really small so if you want to go shopping you have to go well you can go in town but they didn't have a yarn store so I would go into Edinburgh and to this uh, department store called Jenner's and they used to have no, not sure if they do anymore but they used to have a haberdashery and kind of crafting area in the basement and they used to have this kind of outlet section of yarn so I bought some cotton yarn before I knew anything about gauge and um, it just stayed in my stash for many years and I figured at one point now it has to be used for something so I knitted this a couple of years ago and I mean it's really nice um, the yarn is cheap so it is pelling a bit already not sure how many wears this will actually get but I wore it a bit two years ago and of course I managed to um, get this permanent stain. I have not succeeded in getting it out yet. It's soaked all the way through to the wrong sides and what can you do? I mean I tried um, removing it at least three times so um, I was thinking maybe I should. I could cut it. I mean the thing with this is that it grows quite a lot. Um, once I washed it, it grew a bit. I started wearing it, it grew a lot. And then I washed it again, it shrunk a bit. But once you wear it again, then it grows again. So I figured, well, I can actually cut it around, um, not all the way down to the bottom, but just above the stain. And then I can unravel the bit that has the stain. And then I could just I kind of stitch it back together and just removing the section with the stain because I don't really feel like knitting the I-cord edge again. But I've waited so long, I've just worn it a couple of times with the stain on. Um, and, well, I'm not sure if it's gonna look good if I do that. And then someone on Instagram suggested I could dye it in a different color, which would actually be quite a nice idea, but I wanted a white tee. And if I dye it, it won't be white anymore. I could bleach it, but then I'm concerned that maybe the color will change because sometimes bleach just does that to your items, suddenly turns pink or whatever. Um, so not too keen on that either. So I haven't really decided what to do with this. This is the one summer knit that I have, if I can remember. Yeah. So this will be my second one. And the thing is, it's recommended with quite a lot of positive ease considering what I usually go for. So I wasn't really sure which size to choose, but I did actually go for a bit of positive ease. So that means that I'm not sure what the final result will look like on me. Will I actually enjoy that size? But I figured I'm just gonna have to try considering the t-shirts I own. Some of them are a bit more loose than others. I'm gambling that this will be a good fit. And then I'll just choose size for the Emily T based on how this fits. So we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, so that was it. I probably have other knits. I probably have other projects I forgot about. Yeah, in the beginning of the episode, I was trying to knit. Ah, let's see. There we go. Sock number two for the Christmas tree socks in the 34 to 35 size. Here you can see the colors in Arweta, which is my go-to sock yarn for fingering weight projects. I was at one store looking for a Christmas green and they didn't have it. And then I just assumed that I wouldn't be able to find a proper Christmas green and then a few weeks went by and then suddenly my mama brain started getting back into gear again and I figured maybe that other store doesn't carry all of their colors. And then I looked up Garntopia, which is a fairly big yarn store in Oslo, which is located in my old neighborhood. And they had a lot more colors to choose from. So this is the 147 colorway, which is the, it's green enough. It's Christmas tree green enough for me to feel like it fits this project nicely. 
So this is my go-to colors these days. Really enjoying this. And yeah, hopefully by the next episode, I hopefully have uh, gingerbread socks for kits for publishing. If maybe I've already published it. Hopefully I have um, published the Christmas tree patterns in all its different versions. And I just hope that I'm in full Christmas mode then. We'll just have to wait and see. Next time I'll also update you on how the yarn consumption versus yarn uh, purchasing is going. I did purchase a bit more yarn this summer than I was hoping I would, but I made a sweater for myself. I'm making a t-shirt for myself and all of these Christmas knits, when I had the Christmas tree sweater idea, I just had to buy more Christmas colors. So making lots of excuses for myself. I can hear it. I know, I know, but yeah. Overall, thank you for joining me. Um, for next time, I might also post some uh, helpful videos for techniques for my patterns. So you can look out for them as well. I get some questions about techniques sometime. And now that I actually have a YouTube channel, I figured that I can make my own videos to just help you guys make sense of what you're supposed to do. Okay, so that was it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys had a great time knitting and I'll see you guys hopefully in September. Happy knitting! <laughs>